opinion, you know, I don't like to title my class because I never know where I end up at. I, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna splice two things again because a lot of stuff is on my head right now. But let's begin. Let's begin with repentance. All right. What is repentance? I have a question for who's the youngest man here at, at time of truth. You've been here as long as you, you are. What, what's your name again? Shavar. 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 Okay, Shavar. What is repentance? Okay, good, good. Okay, brother. Uh, recognize what you're doing wrong according to the laws of God and turning away from it. Very good, okay. Either one of you, do you have a scripture to explain repentance? No? No. This is a question you will be asked in the streets, you brothers out there teaching. So, okay, any brother outside of an officer can somebody give me a scripture on repentance? Taz 1. 1 Kings 8, verse 47. Okay, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 47. Read, Kabash. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 47. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in a land where they were to carry captives and repent. It says if they bethink them. We go through scriptures a lot, so everybody's supposed to explain this. If they bethink themselves, what does the word bethink mean? Aaron. Remember who that, you were. Right, remember yourself. As Israelite. Right. If you bethink yourselves in the land whither you were carried captives, and what? And repent. And repent. Read on. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying. This is the point. Repent. And it says, saying. We have sinned and have done perversity. We have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies. Right. And return unto the Lord. Come back to his commandments. So repentance is acknowledging. Now listen to what I'm about to say. I'm going to give you some key words. Repentance is acknowledging your sins and forsaking them. Can somebody give me a scripture on repentance? Uh, Acts 319. Acts 319. Acts 319. Yeah, bro. Well, let's, let's first read, let's read Acts 3.19. You can read that, Shiloh. Let me slip. read 1 Kings. I mean, Acts 3.19, you go back to 1 Kings. You go to 1 Kings. Let me see what Yeah, you can use it. Would it be one out, uh, Rory? It, yes, it does say it, but I wouldn't use that one. I, I want, I want one that's a, that's a quick cut. Okay, let's go to the Book of Acts, chapter three, verse nineteen. And it's important that we go over these things. One, for so to know what repentance is, but two, these are questions that you're going to be asked in the street. These are topics you're going to have to be able to explain. Acts three nineteen. Read. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. What does it say? Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So somebody here, give me one, two, three main words in that verse that I'm looking for. What's the one what's the one main word? Can I? Convert. One. Another main word? 
Yeah. Oh. yeah. Repent is another one. Uh, who's behind you? Are you good, Eric? You said something? I'm um, sin. No? No. Block. Those are the three main words I'm looking for right there. All right? So it says, Repent ye therefore and be converted. Converted. Now, mind you, I want a scripture that's going to have the word converted in it. Converted means to what? Change. To change. What scripture would you give me about change? Who's that? My, which one? That's Noah? No, what, what scripture are you going to explain? Converted. Is that it? Psalms 19 to 7? Let's go. Psalms 19, verse 7. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. It says the law of God is perfect, converting the soul. So what it means the law of God is perfect means it's complete. The law of God is perfect. Whatever you need, let me tell you something. In our lives, whatever we need to solve a problem, we can find it in the Bible. We don't have to go anywhere else. You want to solve a, a problem between brothers? The scriptures will tell you. Your marriage? The scriptures will tell you. Everything you want to do, we, this is this book right here is our book on how we guide our lives. So it says the law of God is perfect. So if the Bible is perfect, why are we in other books for? Why are we in the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Book of Jubilee and these books? Evidently, you don't believe the law of God is perfect. And you believe you don't believe you can convert your soul. So you step into other books, looking for deeper understanding. Trying to get deeper, trying to think you're getting one with God. You're going further and further away. The law of God is perfect. What does it do? Converting the soul. It changes your soul. It changes the way you think. That's what we need. That's true repentance. People think repentance is like, Lord, I sinned against you. And you go back and do the same thing again. Convert the way you think. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Who can explain that? The testimony of the Lord is sure. What does it mean? The testimony of the Lord is sure. Somebody else? Somebody? Testimony of the Lord is sure. Go ahead, Does it mean like it's always right? No What's so, yeah. always right? What's the testimony? The, uh, the description of Christ. I'm sorry, I got to speak to him. I don't want to hit. I don't want to check again. The testimony of the Lord is sure. What does the word testimony mean? Somebody. Uh, Abir? Christ. Jesus Christ. Spirit, I know. Jesus Christ. Spirit, I know. Okay. I was going to. Where does the word testimony come from? Uh, Elisha. Covenant. Read. Testify. Okay, Judah. Testify. You had your hand up? What's it called? I was going to say testament. The testament, meaning what? The uh, old covenant and the new covenant. Okay, what does the word testament mean? Say again. Elijah? Covenant. Agreement. Agreement, that's what I want. Okay. So all those words you use, testify, testimony, testament, they're all, they're all uh, synonyms of itself. So it says the testimony of the Lord is shown. Meaning, whatever God said was going to happen, like, guess what? You are going to receive the kingdom. It's sure he's going to do that. This earth was made for your sex. It's never going to change. It's sure. When you show up, when you show up a wall, you make the, when you say, I'm going to show up a dam, you're saying, I'm going to make it that it doesn't fall. God said his word is sure. His testimony, his agreement, the promise he made is sure. So what does that mean for us? We will receive the kingdom. 
If you keep the commandments and the faith in the Messiah, it's not, well, Lord's will, I'm going to make the kingdom. You will receive it. He made a promise to you. So it says, read it again. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. It says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the souls. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The testimony of the Lord is sure. This is the testimony of the Lord, this Bible, what he said was going to happen. It's sure. It's to, it will come to pass. Making wise the simple. So what is he saying? That if you're in this book and you keep his commandments and you believe in this, he's going to make you wise. That's why we, the Israelites, what do we do when we need corners? We take all questions. We don't run for no question. Bring it. If it's in the Bible, bring it to us. Who's the only one that can answer these questions out there? The Israelites. Show me one other group you ever see, ever teach in this Bible that was confounding people. I've never seen. I ain't never seen a Christian ever do it. Huh? Christian be witch. <laughs> the witch of you would bedazzle you. Okay, so back to repentance. What's this? Go from this to 1 Timothy chapter 1. Timothy's one verse nine. First Timothy chapter one verse nine. Knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous man. Knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and the sinners. For unholy and profane, for murderers and fathers and mothers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So the law was made for me. So all stuff in the afternoon. The law was made for you because we all fall short of the kingdom. And it's made to convert you from being what? A thief, a murderer, a manslayer, a perjured person, a, that means a liar, and anything that's against sound doctrine. What is sound doctrine? What is doctrine first? Let's see. Who can explain doctrine? Uh, so come. Proverbs 4. Thank you. Hold this. We're going to come right back here. Proverbs 4. Doctrine. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. Yep. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Really good? For I give ye, for I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. God said, I give you good doctrine. The law of the Lord is pure. Converting the souls. He said, I give you good doctrine. I give you the keys to eternal life. Don't forsake my laws. Keep my commandments. And live. Watch this. Go from that to Sarah 19. Verse 18. Oh, that's Ecclesiasticus. Oh, Ecclesiasticus. Oh. Sorry, Ecclesiasticus. Anybody got the same Ecclesiastes? Page 81. 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 Look right in the middle of the book. It's <laughs> okay, yeah. See at the bottom? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, don't enter, man. You just got to look. That's all. 
19. Chapter 19, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 18. Let's read. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of Him. So if you truly repented, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of Him. You have to fear His judgment. A person who don't fear His judgment has never fully repented. We're supposed to be afraid of sin. We don't. And wisdom obtaineth His love. And wisdom, gaining wisdom, you will attain the love of the Most High. And with his love comes what? Mercy. Show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. That's why it boggles my mind when I, when, I, when I talk to people, and especially with Israelites, that know that Israel and his commandments they don't want to keep. I, I, it just it bothers me. What Bible are you reading from? Christians, all right. Israelites, are you serious? I saw an Israelite teach that homosexuality is a sin, but lesbianism is not wrong. <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm dying. If I'm lying, I'm dying. He said, that's not side of me. I said, what planet are you from? Which Bible do you read? So, you know, he's arguing that. I wasn't arguing. No, I didn't say I was looking. I went to this page and he's burning weed and like, okay, just whatever. Yeah. Read them. For the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtains his love. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. What, what, remember I was looking for that word doctrine before? Don't say, remember I tell you the Bible keep on saying the same things over and over again? It says, for the knowledge of the commandment of the Lord is the doctrine of life. We look. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. And they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit from the tree of immortality. You will receive the fruit from the tree of immortality. And show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. What is the fruit from the tree of immortality? Uh, so Revelation 22, 14. Now let's go. <coughs> Revelations chapter 22. Verse. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Hold on one second. Six, six, six. Okay, read it. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Right, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, you know, <clears throat> and may enter in through the gates into the city. So when you have rights to the tree of life, what explain to me now? What's it called? Um, when you have rights, that means you've earned your way into the gates, into the city to be able to eat of that tree of life, which is eternal life. Right, immortality. You earn the right to enter the city and eat of the fruit of immortality. So, guess what? Guess what? Uh, no, go back, go back real quick before I forget my door. Read verse 19 again. Ecclesiastes 19, 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Shall receive the kingdom. Read on. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. And the knowledge of his om omnipotency. Omnipotence, omnipotence. Right. It says, what's my place? And the fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law. So in all wisdom, if you have wisdom, if you believe you're full of wisdom, then you understand that you have to perform the laws of the most high. So I'm asking a question. Who doesn't understand or believe or who's unclear that you have to keep all the commandments? 
What is the only commandment that you don't have to keep? Is there any? The sacrificial law is done away with that. We no longer do, we no longer sacrifice. Why don't we sacrifice anymore? Because Jesus died on the cross for us. Right, because Christ was our Savior. His blood was shed for the remissions of our sins, so we no longer sacrifice. And when I say just sacrifice, I'm talking about anything that falls under sacrificial law, like tithing. Tithing was given to the priest that sacrificed in the temple in Jerusalem. So those laws are done away with. That's the only thing we can read. So when I say sacrificial law, it's just not sacrifice, I meaning the animal. It's all the precepts or all the um, laws or the statutes, ordinances that fell under that law to the priests. So now, Judy, I'm asking you a question, being that said that, because some of us may not be clear. So, I'm telling you, or you're telling me that you're not, it wasn't that a law to bring 10% to the priest? Right. And the reason why we don't do it, what scripture would you use? The reason why we don't bring 10% is going to go off a train of what we're reading right now. Let me see if I can get my thing. Okay, watch this. Before you answer what book, when I say we no longer have to perform, perform the fact, the sacrificial law, what book would you begin with? In Hebrew. Thank you. There we go. I mean, this stuff is like, not crazy. Yeah. So being that you said Hebrews, I know you understand. Right. Hebrews is going to explain. There's a book, there's a scripture in Hebrews, that's, there's a lot of scriptures in Hebrew, that's going to explain that you no longer have to follow the sacrificial law. Okay, where are you going to, Judah? Something you want to read? Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7. Verse 12. Like he was holding something. Oh. If you want, if you got something to say, Shiloh or Kazak, feel free. Hebrews 7, verse 12. Okay. Hebrews chapter 7. Let's go with verse 11. <laughs> what do you want? Is you, you pulling it? Tell me where to start at. Uh, verse 5. All right, Hebrews 7 and 5. All the way down. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 5. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. Stop. I was wondering, I'm going to see who's thinking. Who's the sons of Levi that was commanded to him? Are offering them to take the tithes of the sons of Levi. Who? The sons of Aaron, right? That's what I want to see if you understand it. I'm Levi, you had to go to the sons of Aaron to bring a tithe to. We don't. To take the tithes of the people according to the law, that is of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Though they come out of the loins of Abraham. We don't. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promise. Somebody explain that to me, please. I'll be all over the place. Okay, I'm not going to I'm going to get to this and end it. Okay, now explain that verse to me. It says, But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promise. What is that talking about, Ben? That's talking about he is talking about Christ because he didn't come from the tribe of Levi. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham. Oh, Melchizedek. Thank you. <laughs> Genesis 19. Which I understand why you're thinking Christ, but I want you to explain it. My Melchizedek. Melchizedek, when he came back from the war against, it was against against uh, not Sodom. It was wasn't against um, against the um, against the kings of the, of the east, mm -hmm. against the king Babylon, Shinar, and them. And kings and Sodom told him you can keep. Yeah, go, go to Genesis. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, let's see. Sodom said that he can keep, keep. all that just give him the man. 
people. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. That's when it came and took a lot away. Yeah. We took a lot. And yeah. it said the kings from Shinar, Ch Chenomolong. You know? Dang, those original booty warriors. What the man? 18, 21 there. 21 says. Also, because of the kind of sound of the Genesis 14. <laughs> Genesis 14, 18. Genesis 14, 18. Genesis chapter 14. Let's go back to Hebrews. So go back to verse 6. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 6. For whose descent is not counted from the from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. Right. Well, Chesedek didn't come out of Abraham, out of, out of Levi, but he blessed Abraham, who the promise was given to Abraham that out of his loins shall come the father of many nations, the seed shall fill the earth. Right? We don't. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. The less is blessed of the better. Who's the less? One word. Who's the less? Abraham. Who's the less? Abraham. He Israel. Huh? Israel. No. The less is blessed of the better. The less is blessed. Who blessed who? No. Right. So who is the who's the less? Abraham. And who is the better? Melchizedek. Why do you think? And this is going far from repentance. Why do you think that and he was writing this in the book of Hebrews to show those Hebrews that guess what? Melchizedek is greater than Abraham. So while you are holding on to thinking that the living according to your way, I'm showing you that Abraham, father Abraham, who's a patriarch, was paying tithes to Melchizedek. Now we all know who Melchizedek is, right? Mm -hmm. no? No. We'll tell you in another class. <laughs> That's really right. Who's Okay, man, question. I'm gonna see who can answer the question. Who's the king? Christ! Who's the king? Christ! Okay. Right, let's move on. <laughs> Verse seven. Verse seven. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes. But there he received them of whom it is witness that he liveth. So, so I explain that verse. And him men that died received tithes. Who's that? Levi. The priest, right? These men died. Mm -hmm. And they received tithes. We went to the temple and we gave it to him. He said, Time one day that man dropped dead. It said, he, it says, But then he received them of whom it is witness that he liveth. So when you die, who's going to receive you? God. Who? Christ. The Most High. Say it again. Somebody. Okay, you answer me. You, uh, you answer me. The Most High. Okay, let's read this again. And without all con all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Who's the less? Uh, Abraham. Who's the better? Melchizedek. Right. Melchizedek is who? Christ. Christ. Okay, read on. Verse 8, and here men that die receive tithes. Now, men that die receive tithes, meaning the priests. They receive tithes of the people, the Levites, and eventually they die. Read on. But there he received them. But then he received them. Who's the he? Right. Christ. Thank you. Of whom it is witness that he lived. Because it was witness that he lived because he came back from the dead and people saw him. It was witness that that man died and came back. We are. And as I may so say, Levi also, who received the tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. It says, and I may say so. And it says, and as I may so say, Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. How did Levi pay tithes in Abraham? Let's see if you think. Christ. No. No. Um, Raziel. How did Levi pay tithes? No, they paid tithes to Abraham. 
And it said pay tithes. It, it said pay tithes in Abraham. Where was Levi in the time of Abraham? Where was he? In the loins. I mean, where did he get born in? Where, where was he at? In, the, in his loins still. You where, where, his, what do you mean his loins? Where? Like in his. When he, <laughs> where, where was he at? In his loins. Where? I mean, that's the reason. Can somebody tell me where he was at? And just say it, man. It was in the balls. It was in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you can't say testicles. Like, no, that's that's, that's where he was going. He was going. I mean, Lois and Moses. I know what Lois is trying to say, but I want you to say the word. He was in his nuts. That's what he's trying to say. He was in his nuts. That's what Levi was. So when Abraham went to pay tithes, he was right there in his father Abraham's testicles. Swimming. Read <laughs> For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Right. So here we go. This is why Paul was writing this. I don't know what this guy was going to do. That you forgets the long route to this point. But <laughs> to when we went to first five. I was trying to thought. Okay, so this is the point I'm trying to make. The reason why Paul was writing to show the, the priest, look at you. Y'all hold on to the sacrificial law. Y'all better repent. I'm going to bring it back. See, I'm going to get repent. Y'all better repent. And you better accept Christ as the Savior. Because y'all wasn't even receiving tithes first. Melchizedek was. And he has nothing to do with the tribe of Levi. So, your office was only temporary. Read on. Verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood. So, if may be made perfect. Because what makes you perfect? The laws of the Most High. Wasn't one of the laws the sacrificial law? Okay. But when Christ came on the earth and he died on the cross, what did he do? He did away with that. He became that perfect sacrifice. That was for to come. That was mentioned throughout the Holy Old Testament. So it says, if therefore perfection were made by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. Read on. What brother need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek? So then, why would there be need that another priest arise out of the order of Melchizedek? Meaning, what does it mean, arise out of the order of Melchizedek? Can I? Melchizedek wasn't a Levite, but he was a, a high priest. Okay, so call. Uh, Melchizedek was a king and priest. Right, he was a king and priest. He said, there's somebody going to rise and be just like Melchizedek. Yeah. Read on. And not be called after the order of Aaron. And will not be called after the order of Aaron. Read on. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. So this is the point that Judah want to get to. That... For the priests of being changed, there was made a necessity a change also the law. That means there was a there, there was it was necessary that the law change. What law? That means you can eat pork now? That's what I said, Christianity, you gotta be stupid. You ain't fuck Christianity. Come on. What had it been changed? The sacrificial law. There was no longer a need for it. And how do we know that? Because a lot, when you read on them, it says, Our Lord and Savior sprang out of Judah. Where it didn't concern anything had to do with the priesthood. So when they were saying that, some some Levites would say, what you mean? It came out of Aaron. They said, no, 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 no. What about Melchizedek? And they knew the story of Melchizedek. And that was the cut. All right, so why did we come here in the first place? Show that law was done away with which law was. Right. Thank you. Uh, you asked a question about whether we have to tithe anymore. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, right, right. So let's go back to repentance. Okay. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, so with all we just read, do we still have to sacrifice? No. Uh, nope. So yeah. what do we... Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. What scripture? Romans 12 and 1. Romans 12 and 1. Uh, I seem to hear the message inside. <laughs> <laughs> and Sirach 35. You'll go to Sirach 35, and um, verse 1, then you'll go to Romans 12. You got another pattern and camera. This right, you'll go to Sirach. 35, verse 1, then you'll go to uh, Romans 12 and 2. Um, I'm right, so. pull that Sirach because I know there's a little Kandias scripture. <laughs> oh, I like that new one. I like that one in 1 Corinthians 5.15. I use that one. I like that one. Uh, 
Can we get real quick? I like that. I don't really use that one. I don't like that. Hey, you make a take home. Let's just read them. Let's read them because, you know, let's read the scriptures. Go to, let's go to Romans 12 and 2 because we got new brothers here, so let's just go through them. Let's go through real quick. Nobody, no more precepts. We're going to go through three, three real quick and come right back. Uh, Romans 12 and 2. Uh, is it 12 and 1? 12 and 1. 12 and 1. Read. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You present your body as a living sacrifice, meaning what? You repent, you get converted, and you put away the things you want. Like, listen, back in the world, today be the day you out there barbecuing, you're going to play ball, get a little bag of weed, you go to it. You say, Lord, I'm no longer going to do those things anymore. I'm going to turn my life over to you, and now I'm going to come and serve you and do what you want. That's the reason we all here today. Because we read the scripture and know that the Lord commands us to do this. Which really is your reasonable service. I mean, it's, it's reasonable. Like when you go buy something, you get, that was a reasonable price. I Meaning, what I paid for what I got was well worth it. But what we have to offer the Lord in comparison to what he's offering back, eternal life, the deal, you're coming off with a steal. Remember, the old God that we serve, the true and the only power, he don't require no weird stuff from us. Like, we walk around taking a sword and beating ourselves on the back. Once a year, bombing out cold. Yeah, you know, you dance kidding? around, dance around naked in a in a in a, in a room full of snakes. You know, what, what's, the, what's the hard thing he act, What's the hardest thing he asks of us? Yeah, yeah, don't don't eat for one day. Listen, I could have with my gut, I could afford not to eat for a day. I got enough fat stored on this gut, I can last day easily. Please, you know what? Guess what? If you have no food, would you not eat for a day? Damn right, you don't got no food. Now, the Lord said, one day you don't got to eat. And brother, like, oh, I said, Lord, I don't know, you're asking too much. <laughs> you see how, I'll tell you something. And I'll tell you, you know why? Because I, I, in the past, I've spoken to brothers. Yeah, when we have, uh, like, like um, voluntary fast, that brother, like, oh, man, that's, that's you know, like, damn, that's a lot to ask for. Anybody not, you know, anybody hard not to do, don't eat for a day. I remember a brother years ago, this could have been about, it was over 10 years ago, when it was uh, the Day of Atonement. What was it? What was it? There was a brother there. Yeah, it was a brother. It wasn't his wife. The brother. Oh, no, it wasn't the brother. It was the brother wanted to do it. It was his wife. She was like, well, can we at least drink water? No, you can't drink But you know, what if I pass out? We already go into wives. How about you just try it? And you know, she made it through the fast. And afterwards, she said she wasn't a thirsty. The Lord don't, he, this is reasonable, very little. For all the blessings he give us, we don't start trying to fit. Lord, I, you to me, I, I can't smoke weed no more? No. <sighs> Okay. Now tell me this. Tell us wrong. You know, let me tell you something. Over mind, man's mind, my mind is wicked as hell. These commandments are righteous. And this is what we follow, as it is written. Say, don't do, don't do. He said, do, just do. As simple as it. We could close with the class. Class is finished. Thou shalt not, don't do that. This is what I tell you to do. Do that. Simple as that. You know when things get screwy? When we begin to put our own mind into it. Well, I think this is what I believe. Those keywords, when you hear this is what I think, hold up, hold up. Let me tell you what I feel. Feel, think, believe. Every time I hear it, you see my you see me go like this. You always see me get at oh. I told you read the Bible this morning. Why are we talking about your feeling? I don't care what I really don't care what nobody feels. It means nothing to me. Show me a scripture, I'll listen. I don't care what you think. And you're not supposed to care what I think. It's not a think tank. 
like like the dang on uh dang on uh the great debaters. Yeah. Bible says do it, don't do it. Let me do it. So it says um what we just read Romans uh, one, give me uh first Corinthians five fifteen. Second, second. second Corinthians, yeah, uh Kabash. You wanna say something? No. Yeah. We got the Ecclesiastes. We're gonna get to it. Yeah, 35-1. Second Corinthians chapter five verse fifteen, and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. So he died that what? That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Christ died so that we, from henceforth on, we no longer live for ourselves. We don't live for what we want. We don't. But unto him which died for them and rose again. Right, but we live all life for him. Well, that is reasonable. I mean, the, the, the man actually did die for you. He was beaten. He was humiliated. And he really didn't have to take it. He said, well, I can call legions. And I, can end, I can end this right now. But you know what? I'm going to take the low. I am the king, but I'm going to let them humiliate me. Beat. Scourge. Me for you. And then we turn around today and say, Man, there's too much too much rules and regulations. What you mean? It's, it's Saturday. How come we think God's gonna kill me because I ate pork? Don't, don't be serious. You guys are a little too much. You think God's gonna be upset with me because I, I fell in love with Tom? I mean that's my soulmate. Yeah, he's gonna kill you. You and your soulmate. First Make you choke in that dead pork chop. <laughs> oh, my mind, man, man's mind is wicked. We will convince ourselves whatever. I'm just not doing it. I've heard sister say before, I was just obeying man in all things. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm. What do you mean in all things? You mean in every, yes, in everything. Well, I, you know, I mean, I got to work that out my own soul salvation. It doesn't set with my spirit. Yeah, it doesn't because you're the devil. That's why it don't set with your spirit. Fall back and shut up. All things. We always make provisions for flesh. Give me that real quick. Romans something was it, like 13. I'm going to show you how the devil worked. 13, 14. Let me see it. Last verse. Yeah. Watch this. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Yeah, there we go. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the Lord. How do you put on the Lord Jesus Christ? Here's a, here you go. I'm going to show the Lord Jesus Christ right now. Here you go, right here. This is the Lord Jesus Christ right here. He's I am the Word made flesh. Put him on. Put on these laws. Read on. But he did put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. You know what provision is? Listen, there's about to be a storm. Let's get some provision. What's that? Provision. Protection. Protection. Right. Protection. Right. You, you store away something. I'm going to store away water and food for the big uh, 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 drought that's going to happen. The Lord said, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for his flesh. What do you, how do you make provisions for your flesh? It's called excuses. Right. You put a little storehouses of stuff in your spirit where, you know, I'm going to keep this command. Just, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. I'm repentant. This is me. Got my bed now. Don't eat pork no more. I ain't no uh, Donald Trump. I ain't no homo. I ain't going to the clubs. You know, I ain't listening to that wicked rap music. But I still keep that photo album of all my old girlfriends back in, and I ain't but I just keep it every so often I go back and look at the pictures you know what you're doing you keep a little little hot pocket a sin inside of you so every so you can go back and say damn remember huh yo remember when we used to do this picture when he was over here drinking if one day, one day I'm this happened to me one day I, can, I did that and one day I was in my place and I was looking at the album there's pictures of me when I was drinking hanging out and chicks that I tricked out and I was like why am I saving this for this is not me. 
But you know what? There's that little hot pocket, that little provision I was keeping stored. You know what that little hot pocket's for? For 15 years later, my wife get on my damn nerve, and I remember that big booty girl, and guess what? I ran to her Facebook, and I remember that. Here we go. Let me tell you, same play games with people and you. Don't make no provision. Get rid of it. Bye. That's the devil. You were the devil then. So why do people hold on to that? I look on some people's Facebook pages, and I see some women. I'm like, you don't know you need to take that picture down? Brothers got pictures. <laughs> Gang banging. No shirt on. Doesn't like what they stomach. In one picture, next picture, they got them with a Bible. <laughs> You're supposed to be embarrassed. That stuff what you used to be. I would I would this be. I would hate for you to ever find a picture of me of my past. So why why do you keep that little hot pocket of sin? Read it again. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. Excuses for your flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Because what are you gonna do? You're gonna fulfill the lust thereof. You're going to fulfill the lust thereof. When you keep that little bit, and you know, everybody know their own line, when you start making an excuse of why you got to do something, why I got to do this, it's because, you know, my wife, she came on, she came on arguing, man. I, you know, I didn't talk to somebody. I enjoy talking to this other girl because we don't argue. We have good conversation. But there ain't nothing yet, you know, please. Spin. The only one stupid is you. I can't believe that for me. All right, so what's this? So rock on, please ask this 35. Tell me that ain't never happened to some of you. And you start making excuses. Why you ain't gonna do what God said to do? You're a new creature in Christ, but you still hold, you still got, you still got one foot firmly planted in the world. You talking about you the truth. You love the truth, you love the most high. And in your, in your dang old iPod, is nothing but ASAP Rocky, What's that? Uh, uh, Chief Keith, two chains, dang on. What's that? Little Boosie, free Boosie, free Boosie. Uh, free Boosie. Uh, you got a free Boosie T-shirt on. With fringes on. Hey, dude, what that guy talking about? That rapper I was talking about the other day. I was listening to. And I said that dude can rhyme. That little ghetto Negro from the Eclipse. Yeah, I forget his name. Pusha T. And I was like, one day I was in my house, this is recent. I was like, yeah, I listened to, I listened to some, some hip hop beats. And somehow, what's it came on? I, uh, and I told you, I said, I listened to I was like, damn, that dude, Pusha T, he can spit. And I called myself, I'm like, that dude is big. <laughs> what are you talking about, Kanai? I? I have a conversation with myself. I said, what are you talking about? Are you serious? What are you talking about? That dude is the devil on earth. You know, that's a little hot pocket right there. Just trying to find a way to angle self in. What enjoyment do you get out of that? If you have any enjoyment that stuff, is because something's wrong with you. So if you turn your iPod and all you got is daggone uh, 10 gigs of wicked rap music and then you got one class <laughs> that, you never, that you never listened to. Okay, you tell me what it is. The hell? To hell with rap music. Drop down. Read. Sarah, chapter 35, verse 1. Read. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. It says, he that keepeth the commandments bringeth offerings enough. So the Lord don't really care about us uh, setting up. Uh, hold that real quick. Give me um, Amos 5. He that keepeth the commandments bringeth offerings enough. Was that eight, nine, eight was five? Verse 21. Amos chapter 5, verse 21. I hate and I despise your feast days. The Lord said what? I hate and I despise your feast days. The Lord hate and despised all feast days. Why? Because we were coming to the feast days and we was wicked as hell, not changing. Walking in there with big garments on, fringes, big beard. To my guests. Most high never Christ bless. <laughs> and then you got all man of sin inside of you. Don't say please. We don't. And I will not smell, and I will not smell in your solemn 
Assemblies. You know the smell was when you when we sent up offerings back then? He said, I would not even smell your silent assemblies, because that all is under wickedness. That's why he said, he said, he that keepeth the commandments bring an offering enough. The Lord don't want us, the Lord never really want us sacrificing animals for our sins. He just gave it to us because we, we make mistakes. But we was we must have been had a day, we must have had a Levites working 20 friends. They must have had a rough job. You know? I'm about to listen, Shalom. No, I'm listen. I'm gonna pick up the turtle dove real quick. I'm about to go steal from this dude. So listen, real quick. There's two shepherds. Go pick up that turtle dove. Meet him back in the temple. And so I can say, I'm about to rob this nigga right here. <laughs> I was like, you wicked nigga. Yeah. And you can imagine what we was doing because we are we are expert at sinning, boy. We are. Hey, you want me to read on to 22? Yeah, read on. Verse 22. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offering of your fat breast. As a scapegoat, that's what it means. To get around, circumvent my commandments. So go back to Ecclesiasticus 35 and 1. You better think that's very easy to So many places I can take this one. Right? Let's read that again. Sirach so chapter 35 verse 1. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. That's what the Lord said. Keep the law. That's good enough offerings for him. We don't. He that taketh heed to the commandment offers peace offerings. And if you take heed to his commandments, it's more important to him than a sacrifice. So back to repentance. The true repentance is what? We acknowledge our sins. We all gonna fall short. Give that real quick. All fall short. Romans 3. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Hold oh, let, let me get there with you. I'm having a problem. 3, verse 23. <coughs> Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It says, For we all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace. We're being we're just He said, Listen, we have all sinned and fall short. That means no man would go to the kingdom of heaven if it was if it wasn't by what? By the grace given up to us. And grace, for you brothers who have been in class, I want you to explain to me. Don't give me a scripture. Explain to me. Well, no, no, stay, stay. Nobody, I want young brothers. None of you brothers have been around for a minute. I want you, you, you. You three. Not you use it. It says, watch this. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that was in Christ Jesus. I mean, the redemption is Christ down the cross. And the grace is what? What is grace? To what? Jesus has the law. What scripture? Titus 2, verse 11. Damn, yeah, the brothers. Yeah. We got Bible scholars in there. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Titus 2. The people think grace is the free pass to say you could sin. It's not what grace is. Very good, Shavar. Very good. You go, we take notes instead of your notes when you go home? Very good. God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. So what teaches us to deny ungodliness? Grace. Grace teaches to keep the commandments. Read. I don't know how people for life, I don't know how people follow Christianity. 
That's, man, I'd rather be on the corner hustling and being the daggum church. Churches make you real stupid. Grace teach. I, listen, I ain't talking about being on the corner. Please don't listen to me. I'm trying to tell you some foolish stuff. Read that again. Strike that last one just a second. Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world. That's what grace teaches to do, to keep the commandments, plain and simple. So let's go back to Romans 3. It says, 23, for, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Watch this. Go to uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 18. Watch this. 18... Verse Verse 12 Sirach chapter 18 Verse 12 Sirach chapter 18 Verse 12 He saw and perceived there In to be evil Therefore he multitude his, his compassion. He multiplied. He multiplied his compassion. He saw and perceived that end to be evil, therefore he multiplied. The Lord knows how we are. He knows we're going to fall short of him. That's why he sent his son to die, to give us a chance of repentance. Because if it wasn't by us keeping commandments, guess what? None of us make it. That's why when I hear folks talking about, are oh, you the two thirds? You ain't, are you serious? There's nothing before it's time. You don't know who's going to repent. You don't, know, you don't know if you're going to make it. Because he said he knew that our end was going to be evil. So he multiplied. Listen to me. The, 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 the multiplying compassion was allowing his son to come and die for us. And after his son died for us, he continued to wink at our ignorance. Even for many of us in this truth that has said in this truth. Why? Because he knows he's a the spirit of us will never do these commandments right. So I have to get an appeasement for my anger. And how I'm going to get my appeasement? I'm going to send my son to die for me. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I think it's reasonable to just, you know, keep the Sabbath day. Don't eat pork, shrimp, crab. Don't be a whoremonger. Don't be an idolater. Don't be a homosexual. Don't be a thief. Don't be anything the Bible says don't be. Simple as that. Pick one and don't do it. Guys, we're fringes, we're fringes. Why do you, well, I've heard brothers say before, why do you wear fringes when I go to camp? That's not what the scriptures say. Just wear fringes. There ain't no argument, it's no big deal. Guys and sisters, when you pray, cover your heads. Well, cover your heads, just cover your head. Women, obey your husband. Just shut up and obey him. Men, be men to get a job, take it. Well, I don't know, I need to get a job, damn it. It's only men mind argue. Yeah, man. Uh, it was this brother who said, um, like right at the Passover, we put up, you know, we had put up our pass Passover pictures on Facebook, and this one guy from some other camp, he made, uh, he took one of our pictures with our fringes on it, and put up there, I don't need to look down at my fringes to know that I'm keeping the commandments. But what does Numbers 15 and 38 actually say? Look upon, look upon your fringes, fringes to know. <laughs> and he, he brought up there. I don't need to look down at no fringes on my garment to know that I'm keeping the commandments. To know, to let me know that I'm keeping the commandments. How does that sound? That's the most foolish, ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. He's actually breaking. <laughs> He's actually breaking the law. I don't have to look. That's the reason why you got to put it on because for some reason you don't understand. It. He said put it on to look upon. He's talking about he don't have to wear fringes. I don't need to wear fringes to. to no, we don't keep the command. And you can tell he didn't read that whole chapter. That's what I was told. Read, if you read that whole chapter, why did Most High make those fringes put up on the border of Israel? Anybody know? Zion? Stand up. Why did the Most High told the children of Israel to put the fringes in the blue rib ribbon on, um, um, on the on their borders of their clothes? He closed, but that's not Judah. Judah. Uh, because he didn't want us to have any excuses when we, if we did break the commandments. Exactly, because that man that was caught uh, working on the Sabbath, bringing in those sticks, he made an excuse. So Moses <laughs> came together and said they have a problem because this man said he didn't know. 
So the most I say, no, 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 make him an example. Put him to death anyway. So now I'm going to make sure. Because, you know, Israel is wise to do evil. So most I said, okay, well, since y'all want to make excuses, now nah, y'all don't have no excuse. Y'all make um, fringes and put the ribbon and look upon it so you can remember. Still put it Right. Yeah, again, it's a call. Uh, I got a precept for the multiplied of mercies that you was talking about. Yeah. It says Second Ezra chapter seven, sixty-six through sixty-eight. So the example that uh, that Kazak uh, used was a good one. That the purpose of it was for us to remember. This, these fringes, we're supposed to look at these fringes and realize there's a lot of commandments that we're supposed to be doing. And we can't pick and choose to say, oh, well, maybe so, I'm not sure. No. When you come to this truth, you, you have an obligation to the most high. Study to show thyself approved, rightly divine the word of truth. It's an obligation God gives you. There's no, listen to me, there's no excuse we can give God in that day say, oh, I didn't know. Why didn't you know? Because you didn't study. If the most high tell you, let you open your eyes to Israel, do you know what he just did to you? He just put his Holy Spirit upon you. Now you got it, and you're like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. No, nigga, you're dumb as hell. How do you know you're Israel, and then, oh, a constitution, you don't open to read it. The white man read his constitution, and he know backward. Oh, which is the only one that really mattered in this whole earth. Ah, oh, we don't read. I didn't know that was wrong to do. Search the scriptures, for then you think you have eternal life. How do you know you don't search the scriptures? Well, I didn't know it was wrong to not pick up sticks on the Sabbath. Okay, you didn't know that. Okay, kill him anyway. Now the rest of you know don't do it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sucks to be you, you should have been the other. Uh, I didn't know I would, okay, oh, you didn't know, okay. Dad, now the rest of you, what you all got to say? Where, where do I get fringes at? <laughs> started on 62. Let's call it again. Second Ezra chapter seven. Started verse 62 down to 68. Second, uh, Ezra, 67. 62. I'm going to read it. I answered then and said, I know, Lord, that the Most High is called merciful and that he hath mercy upon them which are not yet come into the world and upon those that turn to his law and that he is patient and long suffering. Those that have sinned as his creatures and that he is bountiful, for he hath ready to give where it needeth. And that he is the great mercy, for he multiplieth more and more mercy to them that are present and that are past, and also to them that are to come. For he shall not multiply his mercies, the world would not continue with them that heard them. And he pardoneth, for if he did not sow of his goodness, that they which have committed iniquity might be eased of them, and ten thousand part, and ten thousand part of men should not remain living. Mm. That is hard. Mm. That's hard. And y'all can't understand what mercy is after we've that. And no wonder, each and every one of us have sinned sin worthy of death. But through his abundance of mercy, he give us grace and repentance. You know what you're going to do with it. Start making excuses. Here we go. Let's go from that to Luke 13. Watch this. That was a good precept. I like that one. Luke 13, verse 1. Luke chapter 13, verse 1. There were present at the season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things. He said, you think these Galileans were the worst sinners because they suffered such things? Remember, remember they, they were being killed and blood was being mingled. Horrible deaths. Read on. I tell you, nay, but except you repent. He said, nah, they weren't the most wicked people. They were more wicked people than them. But what happened to them? They still got put to death. 
So for us, that should be something that us, makes us afraid. Because the most high putting in, putting that putting to death people that wasn't even the worst sinners. But you see some drug dealers out here that like, how the hell this little Nino is still alive? He ain't, what happened? And little Ray Ray, just first time he wanted to go buy a bag of weed, got shot and killed. What happened? Listen, listen. The worst sinners may not be dead. So what should we do? Be afraid. So when we make light the commandment, whatever commandment, if you make, I'm just not doing that. I, listen, listen, I can't give up weed. I'm not giving that up. I'm not keeping a set. Why am I, listen, it's Saturday. No, that's the day I usually go, I'll do all kinds of, today I go play basketball. I'm not doing that. But you keep all the other commandments. What does he say? Do you think they were the worst sinners? You must be like your worship of the devil, open and you got some people who just got a, a commandment to it. I just can't settle in my spirit. All right. It says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Read that verse again. Uh, verse 3. I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You may say, except you repent, you better you are likewise perish. So what do you say? You better get yourself together. That's what I said. When we be out there teaching the streets, teaching the streets, one thing we got to do is we got to be honest with ourselves and making sure we walk in a walk for real. Walk us walk for real. Unless you get put to death. So those people in our temple, in our, in that, those people whose blood was mingled with the sacrifice, they were an example for others to learn from. A smart man learns from other people's mistakes. See what they're doing wrong, and see what, let me don't do that, lest I get put to death. Or you be stupid and keep on trying to say the what's what happens. We cannot be out there telling people to keep this commandment. We got to be those people that, when you see us on camera, on, on YouTube, and in face-to-face, -face, we the same person. Because man may not know, but the Lord know. He know. We ain't going to escape him. We know. Verse 4. Are those 18 upon whom the tower in Salon, uh, Salon fell and slew them, thinking that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? Right. You know that tower fell and twin towers. You think some people in that building was the worst sinners in the world? No, yes. What will cover your nakedness? It will cover your nakedness. Nakedness being sin. The laws will cover it. This is the same scripture in Revelation, right? That's where three and three and eighteen, right? This, yeah, which one? Revelation 3:18. It says, And anoint your eyes with eye salve that thy might see. Eye salve is a solution that you take, that you that you anoint your eye with so you can see. What is the eye salve that you can see? There you go again. Yeah. Yeah, get it. Enlightening the eyes. Get that. Yeah, brother. You said that um, the commandments cover you your um, nakedness, you said? Yes. Is that the is that the same nakedness that um when they uh, Adam and Eve did from the apple? Mm -hmm. They Absolutely. knew that they were naked or something yeah, like but, that? Yeah, we'll go to the second. We'll get to it. Get that in a Like cut. physical nakedness. This no, no, no. No, this ain't oh, physical. See, that's what I thought. Oh, oh, that's what I was thinking. You mean with Adam and Eve? Mm -hmm. oh, we'll answer it right now. Give me a second. Read that real quick. They don't forget go to Adam and Eve. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Uh, verse 8. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. It enlightens the eyes. Now I can now you can see things. Let me ask brothers and brothers the truth. Don't now you see differently? Don't you ever sit around people and you watch people talk and you just analyze the conversation like these dudes are stupid as hell. Look at us. You get, it's like you don't you Emily, don't you like you see things in slow motion as it unfolding like <laughs> scriptures floating through your head just looking like and like the eye you can see sin a mile away not not going in that direction cool I'm going this way believe that that's power believe that yeah uh, 
hired a new a new brother. Uh, he's 30 years older than me. He's in his 50s. And within like two or three minutes, he came in talking about, and then he went to the club, see the girls down there? Yeah, them girls are down Like In my mind, I just said, old fool. Yep. That's the first, like, oh, he's an old fool. Yep. Old fool, old fool. <laughs> And you, know, and you know, when you do these commandments, that's how your whole day is. You listen and you process. Everything I process, I measure up next to I'll be listening. I'll be talking about something. Man, I'm going to Christianity. Oh, he's on point with that, but he's still stupid. He's not looking at him. Talk to somebody else. He's going to send him back to the family. He's going to send him back to the family. He's going to send That's how your mind works. Your mind is never in scriptures. So when you have one of them hiccups and you're talking about something that ain't scripture, you're like, you get that from I salve, you can see, you see sin clearly. So back to what you're asking about the nakedness. Go to uh, Exodus 32, uh, verse 25. Let's first let's first go to uh, to Genesis. Do you want an inscription song? Which one? Smite me with kindness. Smite me. Oh yeah, remember that song. Song 51. Uh, 141. Oh, 141. Genesis chapter was it three? Yes. Where's the name again? Uh, verse seven. Uh, chapter three, verse seven. Yeah. Uh, Genesis chapter three, verse seven. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed thick, thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. So now see, a lot of Christians, and this, I'm telling you, I always tell brothers, the first three books of the Bible is literally some of the hardest reading you're going to read in this Bible. It ain't talking about what you think it's talking about. It's all allegories of something else. So it says they knew that they sinned. They, they knew that they were no, they knew that they're naked, and they sewed fig leaves upon them. Fig leaves was to do what? Cover them. To cover them. Okay. What is that covering talking about? And it says around other nations. Right. The covering was they were what? Uh, it's in Job thirty. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. One more again. Thirty-one, thirty-three. Read Job chapter thirty-one, verse thirty-three. And by covering my transgressions as Adam, by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. Right. The <coughs> It says, if I covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. So the same way Adam hid his iniquity, the apron was talking about what? He was trying to mask his sins. Let me say, he that covered his sins shall not prosper. Yep. What is that? Proverbs, Proverbs 28, 13. Go ahead, get that real quick. Proverbs 38. 28, 13. Hold um, Genesis. Go to Proverbs 28, 13. Very good precept. I like that one in Job to link it with it. Proverbs 28, 13. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. That's right. He that covereth his sins. He that what? He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. The Bible says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Read on. But whosoever confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. But whosoever confesses and forsaketh them, they're the ones who's going to have mercy. Let's go back. So back in three and seven. Right. Genesis chapter three, verse seven. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they 
Okay, now we're going to explain the naked in a second. The new man is naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So they sewed fig leaves together, meaning they begin to try to cover their sins. When you go on in the chapter, I'm not going to go through this right now, but when they went and hid themselves in, in the garden, they were hiding themselves amongst the other nations. Ezekiel will tell you that. That's what the, the trees were referring to nations they were hiding themselves among. It wasn't, they were hiding behind the tree. Like, one time in Christianity, they was hiding behind the, 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 the elm tree. <laughs> right, watch this. Uh, what was it again? Um, in Exodus 32, yeah, uh, go to verse 25. Let's explain to them real quick. Exodus, what? Exodus chapter 32, verse 25. That's why the Bible says precept must be upon precept. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. So what was the naked talking about? Their sins. Moses had made them naked by causing them to sin. So Adam and Eve wasn't walking around naked, no clothes on them. They were, they were, walk, they were walking naked in their sins. They tried to hide their sins and what they did. Real quick, let's go back to Genesis. One second, Drew. Back to Genesis. Now, now that they sinned, right? Now that Adam and Eve sinned against the Most High, they try to cover up their sins, and God exposed their sins. When you sin, how do I ask about sin? Let's go to Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel was taught to was was had to bring what to the Lord? Sacrifice. Offering, sacrifice, right? Okay, they had to bring offerings to the Most High. So now, be that you understand that, that's in chapter 4. Go back to chapter 3. Watch this. Verse 21. Unto Adam also and his wife did the Lord make coats of skin and clothe them. Remember, they had, they had fig leaves on to cover their nakedness. Now, God gave them coats of skin to clothe them. Remember, the laws are on you to cover up your sins. So what's the coats of skin to clothe them talking about? Usually a uh, sacrifice? Begin the sacrificial law. That's what we get in chapter four. Cain and Abel was what? Bringing offerings to the most high. So those coats of skin came from the animals and it was to cover their sins. He had to give a sacrificial law. On, a, on another tidbit, it had nothing to do with this, but I'm gonna tell you because I'm going up this week. Uh, read on down to verse, read verse uh, 24. Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. So he drove out the men, and he placed them at the east of the garden of Eden, the cherubims, and a flaming sword was turned, was turned every way. To okay, keep, come sorry. Was turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So he drove out the man. Who's the man he drove out of the garden? Right? It says, and placed him in east of the garden. Is the, where's the map at? So I get the map real quick. I want somebody to see something. Because I'm the mother of us all. So it's telling you that Jerusalem is? The garden of Eden. Thank you. It's the garden of Eden. Thank you. Put you out of Jerusalem. Right. Now read the verse. Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way. So he placed at the east of the garden cherubims, right? So which direction did he drive the drive Abraham I mean um Adam Adam. What did he drive? Show him go east. You know which way is east? This way. Right. What's okay, stop, go east. Stop. 
Put your hand a little lower. What is that right there, sons? Okay. Where did Abraham come out of? Ur. Ur of the Chaldees. So when he drove them out, when he drove Adam out, they migrated all the way over to that side of the earth. And that's when we get to Genesis 11. Or is it 12? 12, I think it is. What's this? Where is, where is Abraham? It's Genesis 12, right? Yeah, 12. Yeah. 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 11, 11.31, that's it? Yeah, read. Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. So many of you don't understand why Abraham ended up all the way over by Babylon. How did Abraham end up there? When it's read it, that Abraham, that Ab Adam, dang, can't wear my mouth. Adam was driven out of the garden towards the east. And that's when he put up what? The cherubims. So he couldn't get back in. So read that now. Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. Now what does this have to do with repentance? But anyway. And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sariah, his daughter-in-law, and son, his son Abraham's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. So, one second. They left from here, and their final destination was going to be here. Right? So when we read back in Genesis, where the angels drove him out, and he went east, he went east, and eventually they migrated right here. So by the time we get to Abraham, now Abraham and them was going to go back into the land. So they went from here up to, what's Haran? Haran. And they made their way back down into here. Into, I can't see it. Oh, right here. All right? So read that verse. Read on. Verse verse uh, 31. I'll read it here. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Aram, his son's son, and Sariah his daughter in law, his son Abraham's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and brought there. So now, Terah had sons. He had a son Nahor, Haran, and Abram. Right. Haran died. They left from the Ur Chaldees and they went to a city named Haran. All right? And then from there, when you read on later, you're going to read when Abraham went down from here, down into Israel, and then down, he went south, south of there. He went down south of Egypt and then made his way back up. And it ended up in. I'll show you. Remember when him and Lot separated because of because of all the cattle they had? The substance they had, yeah. Okay. This was a oh here it is. This is where they went this way. Lot went right here. He went to the plains of Jordan. I know said took it fast. But he went to the plains of Jordan and Abram went this way. Over here is where you find this region is where you find Sodom and Gomorrah in this region right here. And this is where he went. He was in the plains of Jordan. Right here. Eastward. Alright, they can't see. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Here go the plains of Jordan. That's another class. Time to class 5.30 in the morning Monday and I'll go over it again. If you were here. Plains of Jordan. This is where Lot, where they separated. Abram told him, you go whichever way. You go to the east, I go to the west. You go from the west, I go to the east. A, uh, Lot decided to go towards the east. So he came here. This way he dwelt at. And Lot and Abraham went this way. And then uh, this is where ancient Sodom and Gomorrah was someplace right around here. All right? All right. So now you understand how when you read back in Genesis, when they said they, when they, said they were driven out the garden and they went eastward, how when you read on later, Abraham got in the earth. And some people wonder, what, what was he doing over there if, he's, if, if Israel was the motherland? Everybody following? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. All right, so why don't we come here? This, um, oh, yeah, why don't we go there for, before then? He had a question about the nakedness. Yeah, yeah. Who had a question? Uh, I'm sorry. The color of Christ? I'm not the color of Christ. I'll get to in a second. 
But what are we going here for? Somebody help me. Somebody who took notes? Who took notes? Okay, before the nakedness. You talking about sacrifice. Before that. Repentance. Naked. That's what we get for. Y'all gotta help bring me back. Okay, I need some. I got scripture for Revelation 3. Revelation 3. Thanks so much. See? I had that too. I was going to go to it. Yeah, 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 it was. Let's go. Revelation 3. Oh, that's right. Revelation 3. I don't remember now. Thank you, uh, Gabriel. Somebody picks. So what? I didn't pull that. No, you're just going to have to warn the Okay, let's do Revelation 3 first. Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white rain, that, that, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Right. The eye salve is this Bible that you can see clearly. We don't. Verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous. Therefore, and repent. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke. So if you get corrected by the Most High, the correction coming out, the Most High is trying to tell you he loves you. Or else he just leaves you alone and you don't get corrected and you die in your sins. That's why now, that's the point I wanted to say again, Psalms 141. Read that. Psalms, chapter 141, verse 5. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness. It says, let the righteous smite me, and it shall be a kindness. When you get smitten or hit, does it feel good? No. 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 But he's saying it's what? It's kind. Because you know what? That smack ain't gonna hurt, ain't gonna kill you. It's gonna hurt you, but it ain't gonna kill you. That's kindness. Would you prefer me to smack you with these scriptures or God to smack you with judgment? Anytime I'll take it. It's, it's gonna it's gonna hurt. It's gonna be embarrassing, but it's better to it's better to take man smacking than the Lord smacking. You know what? The last time the Lord smacked us, we came over here and been for the last four and plus years. And that and that and that smacking was still a kind of smack from him. That was an utterly destroyed smacking. This smack causes four hundred years of slavery. Smack me and it shall be kindness. Yeah, brother. Can you say that scripture one more time? Psalms chapter 141, verse 5. Right. Uh, let's go from that to 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, we're going to wrap it up in a second. I'm going to answer you on the questions. Uh, 13. 2 Corinthians 13. Verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. Reprobate me, void of judgment. So, <clears throat> it said examine yourselves, meaning, who knows you better than you? Nobody. You know what your weakness are, you know what your strength are, you know when you're wrong about something. You know what you gotta fix. One of the hardest things for people to do is to examine yourself, because if you examine yourself, then you possibly might repent. But who wants to look at themselves in a bad light? Everybody wants to say, I'm, I'm right, I got, no. That's how everybody wants to view themselves. Examine yourself whether you're in the faith. How do you examine yourself? You open the book, and you look at the book, and you say, am I doing what this says right here? 